Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 323, the Friday edition. I'm Kevin Coulson. I'm George Conger. Today is September 15th, 2017. Okay, it's, we can just call ourselves the Survivor Network. Uh, a lot of our friends were in Houston for the, the Harvey Hurricane. George actually lives in Florida, and you've suffered some uh, damage from the Irma Hurricane. For those who don't know and don't watch the Weather Channel all the time, like uh, my wife loves to, uh, there was a hurricane formed out uh, east of the Caribbean, went through the Caribbean, really wiped out a lot of the islands there, lots of damage uh there's a couple islands that are absolutely uninhabitable right now. Went to the Keys, did much damage through Miami. You live in northwestern Florida in Lakanto. What type of damage did you have up there? The eye of the storm passed over us on Monday afternoon, but by that time it had been inland for most of the day, so the storm winds were only about 75 miles per hour. Now, well, Miami, you're, higher at, you're higher elevation. Did you get wind damage or...? Yes, we had extensive wind damage. About half the county lost power and water and cable services. And when you lose power for many people, that means your pumps don't work, so you don't have water. And our church is still without telephone service. We personally, at my home and my parents' home, did not lose power, water, electric, because we live in a uh, subdivision that the zoning requires all the utility lines to be underground. Well, I'm an IT expert. I'm going to say you didn't lose internet, too. Am I? No, we didn't. Okay. <laughs> but see, the church is along the main road, uh, out mm-hmm. by the county road, and we have the big uh, cedar telephone poles and whatnot, and uh, the wires come down, and when that happens, uh, you're out of luck, pal. Well, it's a mess until they can come down. Now, you and I both have lots of Facebook friends in, in Houston and in Florida, Um they're slowly coming back online. I'll see posts, oh, we're back, I've got power, we're back, I've got internet. Um, it's slowly happening, but there was a lot of damage south of you that's going to take you know weeks, if not months, for these people to have restoration of services. Yeah, and even in our community, Susan, my wife, and I uh, went around and we visited all the vulnerable people in the congregation, people who live in mobile homes, shut-ins, the elderly, and most of them were without power. And one woman had been in a shelter for four days, and when we came to visit her, she'd just gotten home, and all of her food was destroyed. And we were uh, distributing canned goods uh, from the pantry at the church where we collect such things. And a little, friends, this is a can of water chestnuts, sliced water chestnuts. Mm -hmm. This jelly cranberry sauce, tahini sauce. All things that have been in the back of your cupboard for about 10, 15 years and not really what people need after a hurricane. I am so guilty. Jill and I do that all the time. Once a year, we'll get motivated. We'll go into the pantry. We'll bring a big garbage bag and thunk, 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 thunk. Oh, we didn't have stuffing last day. It's a thunk, thunk, thunk. Cranberries are thunk, thunk, thunk. And we take it and we take it to the local food pantry or uh, Goodwill and we think we've done the honorable thing um it's not so honorable is it well i'm sure it's helpful because it gets it off the grocery shelves and they can restock and people make more money but uh we were distributing meat you know canned meats canned stews things that with, when you don't have power you either have to eat it raw or you've got a barbecue grill and you have got a pot and you stick it in the pot and stick it on the grill and so things that require a bit of preparation and showmanship are not really what you need uh but but I, ha- I am so proud of the people of our congregation that uh, people reached out. We had part of our area was evacuated because of the threat of storm surge because we're along the coast. And we had members of our congregation housing other members. Um, there's very little I had to do uh, in the way of extraordinary work because the people of the church already did it. Um, and the other thing I want to say is that God's hand was certainly in the lives of many people in our church. I went by several houses where the trees, where the major oak trees had come down, but they came down in the driveway along the side of the house. Nobody lost, 
had major damage. Nobody had a house destroyed. Nobody was killed. And when these trees come down, bringing with them the electrical wires, um, what happens in a past hurricane? I remember very well in Vero Beach, I remember about 10 years ago when there was a hurricane. Uh, trees took down some power lines. A fellow stepped out of his house. He walked onto his lawn, and he was electrocuted yeah. because the power lines were in the puddle, which he stepped in and killed him. We've not had any of those sorts of accidents this time around. Hey, George, there's a lot of noise coming from your side over there. Uh, chainsaws, I think. Chainsaws. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this so... Is a, this is the time of year when people become embarrassing and decide they've always had it in them to be artists. And they're carving the stumps of trees into uh, likenesses of Chief Tecumseh or... Uh, well, or, it, it actually... Is, it, it, it sounds like there's a cat rubbing against the computer or something. That's not the case over there, is it? I, I hear this. That's my stomach. I am sorry. Here. Let's get the show over with George. My apologies. Is um, that a check for me? Uh, nobody contributing money to me. I, I see that in the bottom of the shop. <laughs> uh, you know, folks, if you don't want to give money to the show, you can always send it to me. That's right. Yeah, we'll put your link up for you. Uh, here we have. Oh, we. I just went to the Anglican uh, unscripted Facebook page. There are 5,998 likes. How would you like to be 6,000? That would be a great honor to go to a Facebook page, click like, and you know, Hi, I'm 6,000. Isn't that cool? Um, you know, we could ask our wives, George, to like our pages. Kevin, there's only so much we can do. I know. <laughs> that would be dinner, maybe at the Cheesecake Factory, and she would probably like the page. Uh, we'll have to think about that. Hmm. All right. I got the Florida update. Oh, let's talk a little bit uh, uh, about uh, the Global South primates. There was a meeting in Cairo last week, and they issued a statement that said, some of us will go, some of us will stay. But in the end, we don't judge each other for who's going to go to the, the primates meeting and who's not. Um, things keep uh, changing, George. Yes, it is. Uh, I was very pleased by what came out of this meeting at All Saints Cathedral in Cairo. We have new faces on the scene. Mm -hmm. Not only people who have uh, just been elected to office, like Ezekiel Congo, Archbishop of Sudan, which is based in Khartoum. But we had the Bishop of West Africa, Daniel Yenkesarko, the uh, primate of Bangladesh. Um, the Global South Coalition is expanding. GAFCON's remaining static, but essentially they're interchangeable. Everybody in GAFCON's in the Global South. The Global South brand is increasing. And one of the things they decided was that they were as one on issues of doctrine and discipline, on the issues, salvation issues. Attending a primates meeting is not a salvation issue for the Church of Nigeria or for the Church of Uganda. Their House of Bishops has voted not to send their primate to such meetings until the Episcopal Church repents. So uh, Stanley Tagali is not going. Ezekiel Kondo is Archbishop of a brand new province, number 39 of the Communion. Uh, people just don't stop by a cartoon and see how you do it. They go, you know, and so. He needs to go to meet his peers to establish those links and relationships. He's a new boy on the block. So he needs to go to a meeting not so much to powwow with Justin Welby, but rather to work amongst these people. And the primates at, at this Global South meeting were of the opinion, you need to go for what you need to do. And we don't hold that against you. It's, we're, it's entirely within your discretion. But where we are agreed are what are the problems facing the community. And they were quite clear that they had no faith whatsoever in what are called the instruments of unity. Okay, instruments of unity, not an official thing. Kind of was brought up at a uh, lectionary type article submitted by the Virginia Theological Seminary back in, what was it, 1998? Um, 98. How, however, it's been adopted. Somebody mentioned it. Well, that sounds kind of cool. And basically, it's the Archbishop of Canterbury, it's Lambeth, it's the Primates Meeting, and the ACC. Uh, yes, but it was never adopted. Never adopted. It's the like Lambeth the Dennis Canon. It was announced, it was looked at, it was talked about, but eh, we'll get to it. Okay. okay. 
That's a good analogy. Yeah, that's a good analogy. Nobody, nobody, nobody will tell you who knows any better that the, the land that the pro instruments of unity are anything other than kindly and wise and advice. Just it, it came up in conversation and somebody wrote it down, and now it's the official policy of the Archbishop of Canterbury and the ECC. Uh, the primates themselves aren't really big on it, George. No, because they have seen that it's it has no credibility. What, what's the problem right now? Well, the primates, uh, the last primates meeting under Rowan Williams was the Dublin meeting, and about 40% of the people stayed away. And it was basically, it was a bit of a joke. Uh, it adopted all these resolutions about peace, love, and happiness, and it was immediately forgotten because it had no authority whatsoever. It didn't speak to anybody other than in those present uh, on those few days in Dublin. Uh, but then we had the Archbishop of Canterbury, new one, come along and say, okay, trust me, let's gather together, and we're not going to call it a primates meeting, because I know you Ugandans can't go to one. Let's call it a gathering. And they gathered, and they made all these undertakings, which were then promptly either ignored or repudiated by the Archbishop of Canterbury, the consultative council. So the Primates meeting, its members viewed it as, uh, as a joke. Lambeth conferences are postponed and manipulated by the Archbishop of Canterbury. So if the Archbishop of Canterbury is not trusted, then the Lambeth conferences are trusted. And the ACC is viewed as being a creature of uh, its uh, administrators in London. So the overall, there's no, the uh, instruments of unity of the church, so-called, are recognized as uh, being worthless by the Global South primates. They'll tend, they'll pay lip service to it, but they don't take it seriously. Well, I think the only people to respond to this was the ECC. Um, oh, what's this? Ferran from... Josiah Adawu Ferran. One day, somebody's going to actually ask me to pronounce these things correctly. I couldn't do it. Uh, he responded and said that uh, a certain person uh, broke his promises, George. Oh, yeah, he's from Nigeria, and he, uh, after the uh, Nicholas Oko, the Archbishop of Nigeria, announced he was not going, but uh, Adawa Faron gave an interview, I think, to Premier Christian Radio, where he said that, well, if he doesn't come, he's reneging on his promise to walk together. Now, Adawa Faron is a bit of character. Um, he is called, remember last year he called uh, near a niece, basically naive and ignorant. Sure. And he called uh, Eliud Wabakula a liar. Mm -hmm. um, he has a, a way of being rather forthright in his opinions and treating them as if they existed. And so he, he's radioactive <laughs> in the global south. <laughs> Unless you need money or you're looking for a job for your son-in-law, uh, you're an African, you're not going to bother yourself with a guy with your own or the ACC. No. And so these, guys, so these guys in Cairo, when they met, um, they realized, look, this is not a fixable solution because the issue is the man. Now, here's the thing of it. Rowan Williams was able to accomplish more because the primates at that time knew that he didn't agree with them, but he was willing to compromise and work with them. At this point, Archbishop Welby excuse me, has come in, and he came in saying, I'm an evangelical, I'm just like you, you can trust me, and he's let them down personally. And there's a difference between knowing that the person whom, with whom you're negotiating is on a different team, and we try to find the best accommodation, and having someone say, I'm on your side, and then pulling out the rug from underneath your feet. Now, there was, there's a big difference between how Rowan did things and how uh, Justin Welby did things. Um, mm. Let's move here more domestically and talk a, a little bit about, you remember a couple years ago, Catherine Jeffrey Shorey was invited to uh, be at St. Mary's Chapel at Neshota House, right? Yes. Yes. The world consternated the world exploded um pff, heaven and earth like what 
and uh, you know, basically, uh, we talked about it, and uh, Dashota downplayed it. Well, it's not going to be a big deal, and 815 upplayed it. It's a big deal. Now we learn that Michael Curry has been given the Ramsey Award by Nashota House, and George and I are going to talk about it, and you're going to watch Nashota House say it's not a big deal, and 815 is going to say it's a real big deal. What is it, George? Is it a big or a little deal? We need the first stuff. It's a piece of paper. Uh, <laughs> it's a piece of paper, that's right. <laughs> and that uh, looks great on your resume. Uh -huh. Otherwise, I bet it even is a plaque in his office when he goes home. People need to remember that Neshota House is not an entity. There's no dean right now. Stephen P. is gone. He's in the process of leaving. And they're in an interim. And so the chairman of the board of the trustees is Bishop Dan Martin of Springfield, the Episcopal Bishop. Now you need to talk a little louder, George. The, the monitor here is saying you're, you're not talking loud. The, the uh, how should I put this? In the Shoda House, there's a power vacuum. The chairman of the board of the trustees has stepped in, and he is an Episcopal bishop. Therefore, you're going to see an Episcopal orientation because the people making the decisions are from that particular faction within the Neshota House community. So, has Neshota House switched sides? Has it done this or that? No, it hasn't. It's just the way the world works. When there's a vacuum, someone will come in to fill it. Yeah, and that's how I and, see it, too. I mean, uh, you and I were not surprised about the Catherine Jeffert Shorey thing. We said, well, you know, she sends people there. She's going to want to go and say hi. She doesn't send anybody. Diocese send them. The National sure. Church sends nothing to Neshota House. Um, Essentially, I think, Kevin, though, what we have to say is that Michael Ra uh, the Michael Ramsey Award given to Archbishop uh, Curry is the award is for not being Captain Jeffrey Shorey. Because that's his award. I mean, they're <laughs> honoring him for not being like his predecessor. And at this stage, they're going to take whatever they can. Well, he's he, not uh, li like her. He hasn't deposed people left and right, uh, but uh, he's still doing the lawsuits. No, the machine is doing the lawsuits. He's not doing the lawsuits. Okay. The uh, you need, people need to separate. In a, I mean, the arch. Uh, when these things get into motion, the momentum carries things forward. Uh, Michael Curry, uh, it's not a perfect human being, but he is. Uh, people who I know, whom I respect, think highly of. Um, and my interactions with him have always been on a degree that is ten times more pleasant, and more informative, and more, more Christian than that of his predecessors. I so, think that's fair to say. Well, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Right? <laughs> okay, well, that's everything I got on my notes, George. Anything else we need to talk about? South Africa. <gasps> oh, that's right. Thank you. Yeah, it's on my notes. We skipped it. All right, South Africa. What's going on there? Their general synod is meeting, and Archbishop Tabo Makova and the Liberal Bloc are trying to bring in a, a uh, resolution allowing for uh, pastoral services to affirm same-sex couples. Wow. They're starting down the Episcopal road. At first, we're going to have a pastoral accommodation. And then once we work it into the liturgy, then, of course, we have to work it into the canons. And then we work it into the theology. They're doing it sort of backwards. Like uh, Tech did. Yeah, but the South Africans this weekend are going through all that promotion, and you're already starting to see a Sudanese bishop went down to uh, the Cape Town suburbs to ordain uh, a South African man as a priest, just like uh, the Nigerians and the Ugandans and the Kenyans went to the United States to ordain priests. I didn't so, see anything from Justin Welby calling this uh, border crossing. No, and uh, you won't because the Africans unlike the Europeans and the Americans, they don't like to share news. Oh. No, they like, you know, if there's a problem, Kevin, 20 plus years reporting, getting scandals out of Africa is next to impossible <laughs> unless the person tells you itself. The, it's, yeah, I know. I mean, there's a denomination in Christendom that's the same way. Uh, the Orthodox Church 
hides their dirty laundry better than anybody. It's just, you know, it's just the way it is. Same with, you know, Africa is good about that. All right, George, I think we covered all our Friday stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, good, good. I'm Gavin Carlson. I'm George Conger. You've been watching episode 323 of Anglican Unscripted.